Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So we were talking earlier about the decision that six and former President Lungu has made. And because of that decision, and you know that he has decided to re-enter the arena, the brutal, unforgiving arena of politics. Instead of Valungu relegating himself to the status of statesmanship, which is more noble, you know, anytime you have a former head of state, you look at the guy in Tanzania, I forget his name, He's a, they regard him as a former head of state. And, 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 and because he holds that status or that status, he can do no wrong. People adore, they love you and they hold you in high regard. They seek your guidance and your counsel. But the moment you become a political contender once again, you change the whole atmosphere. Anyway, so former uh, six and former President Lungu announced that I want to go back into politics. I know I'm I'm 60 some odd years old. I know I've served twice. I know I've been served. I've, I've, I've been sworn in twice. But but nonetheless, I will still re-enter the political fray and risk it all. Um, all of my benefits, all of my perks are going to slip through my fingers and fall away like dried petals from a stem. All of that he knew about because he said it in his speech. He said, I am willing, ready, and able to suffer the consequences of this action because according to him, he's placed his, his life on the line for his party. Since when did a, did a political party become the be all and end all of everything? Since when did a political party become the crucible of truth? Since when did a political party become the beacon of hope? No, man. When you serve your time, you step aside and you let other people lead. I can tell you this quite frankly. There are many people within the NPF who outwardly support uh, former President Lungu, but who inwardly resent him for placing his name again uh, uh, for leadership. Let me say that again. There are people within the NPF that outwardly support Edgar Lungu, but they inwardly resent him for repeating the process of representing himself, presenting himself again for, for, for leadership. Because the, 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 the general feeling, the general sense within the party is, is Valungu the only one that can lead? Is Valungu the only one that is blessed with the ability to lead? Let's not forget that Valungu became president by accident. There was nothing uh, 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 tailor-made about his presidency. There was nothing deliberate about his presidency. There was no design about his presidency. There was no craftsmanship. There was no drive and desire to attain the position of president. He found himself there purely by luck. Therefore, it stands to reason that when a man like that 
has the opportunity to serve twice, be sworn in twice, it would make sense for him to say, you know what, I've did my, I've done my time, I've did my, I did my bit. It's time for me to step aside, let other people lead. Oh no, you've got these jokers like uh, Given Lovinda and by Emmanuel Mwamba and uh, Bowman Lusambo and Raphael Hijaka Nakachinda who whisper in President Lungu's ears talking about no, it's you and you alone. Therefore, now, now today, former President Lungu is not able to live in the house that he lived in because the government was paying for it under the umbrella of the provisions that the law provides as a former head of state those are the perks that the former president enjoyed living in a house that the government was was paying for the rumor on the street is that Sun Tzu's house, that palatial mansion owned by that famous football player, cost a whopping, are you sitting down, a whopping 6,000 kwacha per day, approximately 180,000 kwacha a month. Staggering. But, notwithstanding, well deserved because he's a former head of state. I don't have any qualms about the house costing 180,000 kwacha. That can at least be understood if not condoned. But what I do have a problem with is for Valungu to leave the lap of luxury after having served two terms and listening to people who've convinced him that this is worthwhile to give up all of those perks just to throw yourself back into the lion's den. Barely 72 hours have gone by. He, he, he no longer lives in the house that he was living in because the government says, well, you're back in politics so we can't pay you. We can't pay your way. We, we, can't, we can no longer foot the bill for your rent. And it go, this goes with many other, m many other things. There's members of staff that the state was paying for under the umbrella of that provision. Well, that's not going to happen anymore because Balungu has literally tossed all of that away. Balungu has thrown caution to the wind and said, Chibe, Chibe, I'm ready to suffer the consequences of this action. Well, Mr. Former President, uh, I hate to be the one to have to break this to you, but that's exactly what's going to happen. You, sir, are going to suffer the consequences of that decision. Your decision was wrong. It was ill-timed. It, um, it was folly, to put it simply. You made a mistake. You made a decision purely based upon self-aggrandizement. You, Mr. Pre former, uh, Mr. former President, made a decision because you listened to jokers like Rafael Nakachinda, people that have no regard, no desire to see this nation move forward, people that only are concerned with self-preservation. So the house is gone. We don't know where uh, former President Lungu stands. Now, the, the rumor is some people are saying he's staying at a lodge. But regardless, now he has to foot his own bill. Not to say that he can't afford it, because everybody knows uh, former President Lungu is extremely rich. He's, he is wealthy beyond description. He, de he doesn't even have to lift a finger. He's so, he's so rich. So nobody's worried about where he's going to go. It's not like former President Lungu's driving around looking for accommodation. No, he's well taken care of. He's fine. He's going to be okay. But there are consequences to this action. And let me also uh, make mention here that because of the fracas, you know that word fracas, okay? Because of the the discombobulation, because of the 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 conflagration that's happening over there at the NPF Secretariat, because of all of that mess, uh, what we're looking at now is a party that's literally about to implode and we had situations where members of the NPF 
were being dispersed by the police because the police had to use tear gas to disperse the crowd, the stubborn NPF crowd. Out of that, the NPF have tried to create a false narrative that one of their members was shot. If you watch, if you go to Emmanuel Mwamba's page, and I must tell you, I'm very disappointed with uh, by Emmanuel Mwamba because for many years people have said that Emmanuel Mwamba is a chief propagandist. And uh, by Emmanuel is someone I know and I consider to be a friend. But to watch him peddle a falsehood, to watch him uh, sort of lend his voice to a false narrative just for political gain is very disappointing. By Emmanuel Mwamba on his page posted a, a short video clip of some guy with a camera in his face, there's a nick. You know what a nick is? A little cut right above his eye with a bit of blood coming out. And then there's a voice on the other side of the, the, the camera saying, no, this is one of our members. He's been shot with a shotgun. Eh? Eh? He was in the crowd. The guy has a little nick above his eye. But the narration, the propaganda is, Oh, do you know what a shotgun can do? You think a shotgun can leave such a small nick on your, on your, above your eye? Hmm? You think people are that dwanzi? Problem by NP, if they think we are not all dao. We can see for ourselves. It doesn't take a genius to know and to tell that that's just a nick, probably self-imposed, if you ask me. But but to equate that to a shotgun wound? Come on, Negroes! Do the right thing if you're going to combat, combat. Okay, if you're going to engage, engage. But don't create falsehoods just for political purposes and for political sympathy, which is what you're trying to do. But let me tell you something, you're not going to get away with it. You're not going to get away with it because that narrative is not going to stick. If it's not gelling, then it's not jello. How dare you try to create a lie? Kuti no, wamula some food to you. Edio shorty gani nayo. Thank goodness the police have issued a statement saying, look, there is no such report. We've been to the hospitals. There is no such report. No such thing happened. First of all, it was they showed a picture of some guy being shot. Because, you know, on social media, I tell you, it is so easy to, to lead a particular narrative. You Anybody can do it. All you need is a platform, multiple platforms, and consistency. You weave the same lie. You, you circulate it for a couple of times, boom, it, it, it gains traction, everybody believes it. It's like the story grows legs, okay? Nobody was shot. Tear gas was dispersed, sorry, was discharged, yes, tear gas was discharged to disperse the unruly NPF crowd, because you know, those homeboys are so stubborn, the only thing that's going to get them on their feet is if you you tear gas those buggers, okay, but, 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 but to say that somebody was shot, that's not true, and, and don't don't create that falsehood. So now, in conclusion, let me say, um, tomorrow, and I and I posted this, and I'll say it again. By given Lubinda has called upon all the members of the NPF, or as many of them, uh, or as, as many as can come to the venue. By Lubinda has said come in numbers and he said that uh, you can only stretch a rubber band to a certain point but when it gets to if you stretch it too far it can snap and when it snaps all bets are off 
Palobinda. Give me a break. What are you going to stop? You forget you're no longer in power. You forget you no longer hold the reins of power. You forget you're not riding high on the saddle anymore. You forget you're not some big sheriff in a small rookie town. Large hat, big star, large hat, jet black wavy hair, large hat, big star, and a 44 on your side. What do you think this is? The wild, wild west? Valvinda. Wake up and smell the coffee. You're not in Kansas anymore, okay? So, so you are in no position to issue such threats. If you do issue those threats and your homeboys respond and they act crazy, well, guess what? Okay, so tomorrow I'm asking you, all of you, stay away from that area. Just stay away from that secretariat. Don't even drive past there after 9 o'clock. Because, you know, these people are nuts. These NPF hooligans are absolutely insane. They have lost their God-given minds. They will do everything and anything to cause havoc, uh, to cause chaos, confusion, and bedlam. Stay away from those jokers. Let the dust settle and let the dew dry on this issue. We will go wherever the evidence takes us. We don't even know how this is going to end. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't even know how it's going to end. But I do know one thing. The NPLF are not going to win. I can guarantee you that. They can hook, holler, and scream until their hair is curled. They're not going to win. All right. I got to go. Thought I'd share that with you. I'm late. It's going to take me half an hour to get home. Unbelievable. All right. See you tomorrow. Bye. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.